Hello, this is Todd Luck, and did you know Tarzan had a son? Korak, Son of Tarzan, has a new novel out right now. It's called Korak at the Earth's Core, and you can get that at your booksellers online, or you can order it from edgaricebirds.com and get like free trading cards. My understanding is that if you pre-ordered it, it should be shipping. I haven't received a review copy, but I have seen people post online that they have received their copy in the mail, and it is also available to read digitally on Kindle. And so with the arrival of the new novel, I thought I would do a video listing out the things that I know of that have been done with the character over the years. By no means is this probably going to be every single appearance of Korak, but it's going to be enough to keep you busy for a long, long time. So he first appeared in an Edgar Rice Burroughs novel called The Eternal Savage or The Eternal Lover. It was just a cameo. He was a baby. Um, and then he also appeared as a baby in The Beast of Tarzan. Um, he's Tarzan and Jane's son, and Nicholas Rokoff, Tarzan's arch enemy, kidnaps him, and Tarzan's got to go save his baby. And so the next novel is Son of Tarzan, and this is the fourth Tarzan novel, and so I'm going to talk about it real briefly while using some Russ Manning comic art to illustrate. So Tarzan and Jane raise their son Jack in Europe, and Jane forbids Jack from knowing anything about the jungle, so of course he becomes obsessed with it. And so Jack meets an ape named Akut, and in all of his infinite childhood wisdom, he decides to take Akut back to Africa without telling anybody. And of course, things go horribly wrong. He ends up stranded in Africa, and he tries to go to the natives, and they try to kill him. He go, tries to go to white people, and they try to kill him. He tries to go to the great apes, and they try to kill him too. And so rejected on all sides, Korak finds solace in a little girl named Miriam, who he saves from an abusive sheik. And Korak and Miriam learn the ways of the jungle together and live as apes because, as Miriam says, the jungle is kinder than man. Jack takes the name Korak, which means killer in the language of the great apes, and he gains the abilities of his father, Tarzan. Miriam gains very similar abilities, though she lacks the strength and fighting prowess of Tarzan and Korak, but she can still take care of herself. Korak and Miriam, of course, fall in love. They get married, and they are reunited with Tarzan and Jane. Happy endings for all. It is one of Burroughs' finest novels. It's also a very important novel to the Tarzan series because it establishes what's going to be in the rest of the novels. This is the first time we establish Tarzan's African estate where he lives with Jane and the Waziri. It establishes that Tarzan protects his territory and has a strict code of ethics that he imposes on the people who come into his jungle and that he protects the natives and animals there and that the Waziri are his enforcers. They're the power behind the crown for the Lord of the Jungle. After Son of Tarzan, Korak would go on to have a surprise appearance in another one of Burroughs' finest novels, Tarzan the Terrible, set in the Valley of Paladon. And it's a small subplot, but a very significant one. After that, Jack would have cameo appearances in Tarzan and the Golden Lion and Tarzan and the Ant-Man, both excellent novels. And so that's it for Jack's appearances in the Burroughs novels. But of course, Tarzan is a multimedia empire. And so he has appeared in quite a few other things, including a silent movie adapting Son of Tarzan. Now, this is a fantastic movie, but the film, of course, has deteriorated over time. So I really recommend picking up the Grapevine video version of this. This is a Blu-ray. It's fully restored, and it is such an awesome movie serial. Very faithful to the novel, and it adds in a subplot involving Tarzan and Jane. It's really, really good stuff. Tarzan is also Lord of the Comic Strip, so Son of Tarzan did get a very thorough comic strip adaption back in the day, and so you can actually read that along with the other adaptions of the first four Tarzan novels in this hardcover from the Library of American Comic Essentials. Korak would become a regular character in the comic strips and would be used by various different writers and artists, including the great Russ Manning. 
There have been various different printings of the comic strips over the years. For instance, Tarzan 238 and Tarzan Family 60 have a two-part reprinting of a story where Tarzan and Korak go to the Earth's core. The story and art in these issues is excellent, but they do reprint these comic strips by chopping them up and reformatting them to fit a comic book page. You can get thorough reprintings of the Russ Manning comic strips in their original format in hardcover collections. All right, so let's talk comic books because that's where a lot of people know Korak's Son of Tarzan from. So technically, Korak's first appearance is Tarzan 139. In this issue, Boy from the movies changes his name to Korak. Eventually, the comics do shift to being based on the novels. And so in Tarzan 158, they do adapt the Son of Tarzan with artwork by Russ Manning. That was the comic art I was showing you while I was talking about the novel. And if you're trying to be really thorough about it, he does make the cut and has cameos in some of the other adaptions that Golke did. So he does appear in the adaption of Tarzan the Terrible from Tarzan 166 and 167, Tarzan the Golden Lion, which is in issues 172 and 173, and Tarzan and the Ant-Man, which is in issues 174 and 175. In the 1960s, Korak would also receive his own ongoing series called Korak, Son of Tarzan, and it had these gorgeous painted covers. And the early issues would feature Russ Manning art and are available in collections. Gold Key would publish Korak through issue 45, and I think the later issues are worth picking up too. They're each self-contained adventures, so some of them are better than others, but there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. And just as a quick side note, in comics, you'll often notice that Korak has brown hair, and I think this is probably just to help differentiate him from his father. In the novel, it does say he has black hair. DC would take over Korak, son of Tarzan, with issue 46, and they would retool the character a little bit, so he's on this endless quest to find and save Miriam, and it also brings in a lot more fantasy elements, a lot more fantastic creatures for Korak to fight. Korak would also become a regular feature in the 100-page giant issues of Tarzan, which would run from issues 230 to 235. And in these stories, Korak is still looking for Miriam, and we still have the heavier fantasy elements. The Korak Son of Tarzan series is renamed Tarzan Family Presents Korak, starting with issue 60, and they start adding in backup stories with other Burroughs characters. Due to an editorial shift, the quest for Miriam gets dropped and issue 66 has Korak with his family. This was meant to be a new direction for the series, but unfortunately at the same time it ended up being canceled and so issue 66 was the final issue and Miriam is still out there somewhere waiting to be saved. That would be the last time Korak would have his own comic, but he would have appearances in the Tarzan comics. He makes some appearances late in Marvel's Tarzan run in the late 70s, and so he does appear in a cameo in the third annual. He also appears in the final plot line, which runs from 25 to 29 of Marvel's Tarzan Lord of the Jungle series. Korak wouldn't appear again as a character in a comic book until the 90s when in Dark Horse's Tarzan series, issues 17 through 20, is Tarzan versus the Moon Men. Korak has a minor but very enjoyable subplot in here. And so this is issues 17 through 20, and it's also included in the Tarzan Omnibus by Dark Horse Comics. In more recent years, Korak has appeared in the Korak the Killer comic strip on EdgarRiceBurrows.com, and that story has been wrapped up, and it's by Ron Mars and Rick Leonardo, and it's really good stuff. Korak and Miriam have both had a Migo-style figure come out in the World's Greatest Heroes line that is like a Migo-style figure, so if you're interested in that, there you go. All right, that's everything I could think of. Let me know if I'm missing anything in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos. And as Korak's dad would say, <coughs> see ya.